basically. Just leave it on and, and carries on. All right, so point it in a general direction as I'm uh, talking. Yeah. And you all pick everything up. So luckily it's not too windy today, which uh, sometimes causes those issues. Right, so first things first, when you get to site, obviously the first thing you want to do is obviously pick your pitch wherever you're going. If you remember the uh, Caravan Club, or Caravan Motor Home Club as it's called now, or the Camping and Caravan Club, differences are Caravan Club or Caravan Motor Home Club, say go and find your own pitch and come back and tell us where you are. Yeah. Camping and Caravan tend to show you to your pitch or show you to a selection of pitches and may even help you to get onto the pitch. Okay. okay? So if you are going to be a member of them, it's worth considering. Um, so the first thing is first, obviously you have got a mover, so you could use the mover to get it onto the pitch, mm -hmm. or you can use your vehicle to get it onto the pitch. Okay. So once you've got it onto the pitch, have a look, see how level it is. Is it level side to side? So that's the first one we're going to try and level up. So if it's level, obviously you don't need to level it up. If it is, so it's one side down or the other, you're going to need chocks or uh, levelling ramps. So say that, lev that side is down, you're going to need to get that onto a, a, mm -hmm. a block or a level. So lift it up level. Okay? Yeah. The steadies which are in the corner, they are not there for lifting, so they're not going to help you to do that. Uh, they're just there to steady it. So once you've got it level side to side, then we can get, if you could use the car to use it to push it up onto the ramps, handbrake on, disconnect from the car, get the car out of the way, then we need to level it front to back. Mm -hmm. So using the jockey wheel, you just spin that round, it either drops the nose down or brings the nose up. Spirit level obviously very important. Oh, um, <laughs> so you can buy these. You can buy these for pence, kind of thing now. So again, have a look. If it's, as long as it's level side to side, you can put it. Make sure you put it on a level surface. I tend to just put it through the door. It's up to you. As long as it's a level surface, and then make sure it's level yeah. front to back. Once you've got it front to back level, then we can start putting the steadies down, which is the legs in the corner. Make sure you get at least one down at the back before you jump in. If mm -hmm. you don't, you'll end up with a seesaw. Okay. It's a bit embarrassing when you're on site, you're standing in the caravan is looking up there <laughs> and everyone will be laughing. Okay? Yeah, I would so be. <laughs> make sure you get at least one down on the back. If yeah. you've still got it attached to the car, you can jump in because obviously the car is going to hold it. Yeah, yeah. But once you've disconnected it from the car, get a leg down at the back and then it, at least one. Well, that's, what, that's the question I was going to ask about when you, pe you see people stop to stay in there by having a cup yeah. of tea. Some is people it, put their legs down. But I don't have to. You don't have to, no. Okay. The car. Yeah. It's, you, you'll feel a bit of movement if a yeah, lorry yeah. goes past you being a leg boy. But it's not critical to it, as long as you've got the... But some people just like to have it that, that, that bit steady, okay. so they put a back leg down. All right, James? Yeah. All right. Number plate. Oh, beautiful, oh. thank you. All right. So we'll put that one on after. So once you've... Oh, well, steady is obviously the first thing. So what you've got with uh, your van that comes is a bent piece of metal. With that on the end, you've got steady. So the, to put the steady down, just a good time with the tractor coming past. So either side at the front, Oh yeah, yeah. So normally you'd put the leg down at the back first. I've yeah, already yeah. done that. Yeah. So you've got this. It takes a while to put it down. Mm -hmm. What I have got, what I have got is a drill. Have you got a cordless drill? I have, yeah. Maybe we're considering getting the uh, fitting, which is uh, a three-quarter inch or oh, 19 mil. That is a lot quicker than and. If it's raining, obviously, or really it's hot, that's a lot easier there. way than doing it with yeah, that. Yeah. Unless you like standing in the rain, but. So, all you do is bring the leg to the floor, ground, whatever it is. You may want to put pads on it. You can get these ones that just clip on mm -hmm. and stay with it, or you can just put a piece of, piece of wood. It's up to you how you do it. Then once I've done all four, what I tend to do is just grab the handle and do that. If it's still bouncing around, you haven't put it tight enough. So just do another half turn right. on all, all the legs. If it's bounced around, you, when you get in, you'll get a bit seasick. Yeah, yeah. But once you've got it it's steady, it, that's quite solid. It, I am obviously put the other leg down, so if I had the other leg down, that'd be solid then. Yeah, yeah. If you have a, space a lot of if you put the awning in the centre of the van, uh -huh. when you're travelling, if, you if you're having an awning, by taking that out, it takes the weight off, the suspension may lift it up a little bit. So if you put all the legs down, then you get in and take the, the awning out, it's probably lifted up. So you might out, just yeah, have yeah, to yeah. Knock tweak again. it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this back up now. Just for ease of use for Obviously when you normally it, we have all four legs down. I'm just re relying on the, the back legs and the uh jockey at the moment. Okay, so once you've done that, then you can start thinking about can um, connecting your electrics, gas and everything else. So normally your gas bottle will be sitting in there. The pigtail, which is that there, will be attached to the bottle. Okay. Do not travel with the gas on. 
always turn it off when you're traveling. So obviously when you get there, you need to turn it on. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you've used gas before the propane. Yeah, yeah. It's just a tap on the top. The thread, as you can see that there, that, that just screws into the bottle. It's a reverse thread. So if you've ever attached gas to a, a pipe to a gas, it's always turning it left instead of right when you tighten it up. So that's connected yeah, to that, that which yeah. is connected to the this, this, is, this is your pigtail. That's my pigtail at the moment. Oh, okay, it's attached yeah, to the reg yeah. regulator. You, that's your new one. Yeah. Uh, the regulator is actually part of the vehicle. So in, in the past, if you've ever used anything with gas, the regulator is usually what you screw to the bottle. The regulator on leisure vehicles since 2005, uh, um have been attached. So all you've got is the pipe which is the external bit. You can use propane or butane off that, off that regulator, but you'd have a different, a separate pipe or a different pipe with a different connection on the end of it. But you'll have the one with propane, which, you supply, which will be supplied with it. Which is a blue bottle? No, red bottle. Oh dear. Red bottle. What's that? Oh, I, wanted, I wanted blue bottle, colour. Yeah, well, red bottle's colour. Oh, is it? Right. Yeah, so that's, propane is a better gas for all year round. The butane is more of a, a summer gas. Right, and it right. doesn't gas off in the colder weather. So what, what have we got? We've got in our store at home, that's a blue bottle. Yes, it's a blue bottle. Blue yeah. bottle, gas. It's up to you. If you want to change it in no, the no, I'm happy, butane, I'm happy. you'd be better, honestly, you'd be better with propane all year round. It's where, yeah. I think we, it is a propane, but it's a blue bottle. It's a different plus, bottle. plus, it's a different gas. Butane and <laughs> propane are different yeah, gas. Yeah. Okay. Well, one freezes quicker than it is. Yeah, well, what it is, it doesn't gas off at below a, a certain temperature. So yeah, butane yeah. doesn't tend to... When you get to the zero temperatures, butane starts to struggle and the, it doesn't gas off because it's a liquid in that mm -hmm. in the bottle there. Okay. So it gases off. Propane will, will gas off up Whatever the down to about minus 40. There you go. So if you're away in this and not minus 40, I'll, I'll be quite surprised, but you never, you never know. <laughs> right, so I've turned the gas on. Usually I do that when I'm in my van, so then the wife can actually go inside and start making a cup of tea <laughs> while I'm <laughs> so, yes. yes. Or something stronger, depending on how good a journey you've had. <laughs> right, on the outside, this is your water connection. Obviously, I've got my Acarol here. Yours is brand new in the box. I don't know if you can see, there's a picture on the outside. You can hold hands to go and uh, fill oh, it up if you really wanted to. Beautiful. Depends on, uh, again, how, how good a trip you've had down, if you've been arguing. <laughs> right, so, water pipe. This comes with it. This is yours. You can see that. It's got a tendency to want to curl up. So, when you put it in, make sure you straighten it out. Put it in the Acarol. Right to the bottom. And it just clicks in. To take it out, just pull back on the trigger and it pulls out. The reason why you straighten it out, if it's curling up, it's going to be, like the filter end is going to be up here, mm -hmm. just drawing air rather than the water that's in the barrel. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next thing we connect is the electric. So you'll have a cable similar to this. So you just pull back on that, connect to your caravan first, push it all the way on. Then, you see that there's a little groove. Just push that across. Then lock that up. Yeah. Okay, so that's what that groove is there for. Unravel the cable fully. Connect to your bollard last. Okay. Yeah. Don't connect to your bollard first because if you put connect that, you've then got a live cable. You're walking across wet grass. <laughs> Not going to be good. Okay. So best to connect to your caravan. Obviously, opposite when you when it's time to go home, disconnect it off the bollard first, and then off the caravan last. Okay. So what we've also got, obviously, you can see, is the a battery. It's called a leisure battery, it's not the same as a car battery, it's a slightly different way they work. A caravan, you can work a caravan without electric, mm -hmm. okay? Obviously the microwave won't work, but you can, as they say, um, use it off-grid, so no electric connected. So the, the 12 volt, what that will do is ignite the gas on, the, say, the fridge, the heating, also obviously does the lightings as well, and the water pump. So it will obviously only last so long, same with the phone. If you stop playing with your phone, the battery obviously goes down a lot quicker than if you not if you leave it alone. Okay, when you connect electric to it, it will recharge it. So there's a charger unit on there that will put power back into that battery. You don't need to worry about the level of the battery if you've got electric connected, because you're more or less taking the power through. Even though it's st there's still things operating on 12 volts, it's coming through the charger. Then you don't have to worry about the level of the battery if you've got electric connected. Mm -hmm. All right. That makes sense, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, something like Right, motor movement, which is underneath there. I'm going to explain that afterwards once we've disconnected anything and you can see it um, in operation. Okay. Right, water, um, waste water even. I've got my bucket there just for now. You've got a waste, um, what is called a waste master, which is a, a wheel container and also some grey pipes. The grey pipes just push onto there. Okay, okay so yeah, that's yeah. a little flat. So they just push in there and the other end goes into the waste master. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is grey water. Uh, wastewater that comes from the sink to the shower, and then uh, obviously you go and enter that into a into a drain somewhere. 
what you can do, if you're on a super pitch, you can actually have a, a, a direct water connection to your Acarol or to your van. So it's a pipe, uh, there's a pipe, a tap on the pitch, and it may also have a drain, which you can go direct into that as well. Okay. So on, the, on our site up there, that's what you can do. Some pitches you don't, you can't do that. You have to rely on your waste master and your Acarol. If you're, you realize that your Acarol is empty, you've used all the water, so you're gonna to have to go and fill that back up again. Ha check your waste master, because the likelihood is the water that's gone in there has come through the taps, down the plug hole, and back at, out here. So this will be full if that's empty. Uh, so check. Yeah. If yeah, you're going yeah. to fill that, and it's likely you're going to need to go and empty that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Otherwise, it could be overflowing. Okay. All right. All right. Next thing, which I was going to say, is the toilet, which is obviously around the other side on this map. But what you've got in this this area here, obviously, you've got a lot of storage under that bed. Mm -hmm. What you've also got is your spare wheel is sitting there. Be very careful what you put in this area here. You do not want heavy, bulky stuff. So you do not want to start putting um, awnings or anything there because the, the risk is that on the back end, if you get the caravan out of balance, usually it's by putting a lot of weight at the back end okay, yeah, yeah. and it will start wanting to do that. Okay, so no you, don't, you don't want to be in that position which is called snaking and the back end will start to control the car. Okay, so if you've got anything like awning over the wheel or over, uh, in the center of the caravan. Obviously you've got bike racks on the back. So again, you've got to think, if you have got weight on the back, you need to balance it out with something at the front. So if this will take, I think it's a maximum of 60 kilo. You don't really, really want 60 kilo on the back. If you've got lighter bikes, obviously the better. Electric bikes are probably not advisable to have them if you've got something like that on the back. Okay. okay. Right, the, wind, the winding positions for your legs at the back are just under the, under the uh, back of the van there, so either side there. So that's where you wind them down. Oh, straight on, yeah. 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 So on the side, you see it's just through the, uh, the skirt or yeah. the hole. This is uh -huh. what you just see underneath. Okay. All right. While we're here, we might as well have a look at the bike rack. Ooh. So the bike rack is clipped up, up into place at the moment. So on these points here, so you only do is just pull it down. So what you've got is a couple of straps here. So very similar to these ones here. Look, all you do is just lift that and it just pulls out. These ones here, just strap over there. That's to stop it bouncing, bouncing yeah. around. Obviously wheels for bikes go in there. If you've got a bike rack, it should look somewhat yeah. similar. Yeah. And these will slide up and down the rail. Obviously depending on the size of your bike. That through the wheel clips it in. Obviously these clip onto the, uh, the frames themselves. Okay, you may want to secure them. Obviously if you're leaving your van, then you've got, currently you obviously want to put some kind of security on it. You never know who's about. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. Right, coming down the side. Don't you want to get on video? <laughs> this, this, is the fun this is the fun place on the, on the caravan side. So what we've got here, that is a, a, a reservoir for the flush system for your toilet. All right. This down here, is the reservoir for the not so nice stuff in the toilet. Okay, so before we use it, we'll put a pink, a, a small amount of pink chemical in there and uh, right, fill it up with water. Do not do that before you leave home. You do not want to be traveling with water in here because if it overflows into the van, which it likely will, because if you're moving it down the road, it's obviously yeah, that yeah. movement, water may overflow. Okay, so don't fill it up until you get to the site. This one, so it's a waste container. So to release it, just lift that orange handle, it slides out. Before we use it, we, we want to put blue chemical in this one. But if it's not, if this container is not coming out freely, push it back in, have a look on the toilet, has the wastegate been left open? If it's not fully closed, it won't want to come out easily. So if you start wrenching it out, you may damage it. So just push it in, just check, is the wastegate closed? Then it should slide out as easy as that. We have got the handle wheels, obviously makes it easier to go and empty as in transporting it. So before we use it, we put a blue chemical or a green chemical, depending on what site you're on. So what we've got here is a measuring jug. Again, depending on the uh, concentration of the chemical is how much you put in there. So read the, read the label to make sure you, you're putting enough in or not too much in. Okay. So if it's concentrated, you might want obviously half as much. Then we put around about a pint of water in there as well. That's to help break down the nasty stuff. Okay, when you go to empty it, I'm looking at you now. Um, <laughs> I'm, not to to empty it. I'm not allowed to use it. You're not allowed to use it. Oh, well, you won't have to empty it. Um, so when we go to empty it, it's going to come out of this hole. Right. right. So when you get to site, there are chemical emptying points. On our site, you can actually enter them on the pitch. Not literally on the pitch, but there's a, <laughs> there's a, hole, there's a hole to drop it down into if you want yeah. to. Um, but a lot of sites, they usually have a big white funnel with a brick wall around. They could be outdoors or undercover. 
Um, this big white funnel's got a big hole in the bottom of it, and normally it's got a brick wall around it. Do not put that on the brick wall next to it. You go and knock that down the hole. You're not going to be sticking around down there to go and try and fish that out, even if you can actually reach it. So put it on the floor behind you so you don't, it doesn't disappear. Then all you do, I'm just going to put that back on there for now. Then all you do is just em to empty it, press that air button as well. That allows air to allow yeah, it to flow yeah, yeah. A, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. If you're washing it out, so you can just put some water back in and just wash it and drop it drop it back down again. Be very careful, there's a little float inside here, which is part of the indication for when this is full. There's a light on the uh, system inside. If you flash that around when you try to clean it and empty that, that might go down with it. Right. So that float might disappear down the empty point, so you won't have that. So just be careful with that. You can access in here if you want to. So I don't know if you can see there, there's that little float. Can you see that? In that corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, it's obviously quite vulnerable if you're flashing that around. But unless you're trying to clean it or do whatever, you, you probably don't even need to go into that. But when you put it back in, make sure it's in that position. Because mm -hmm. when you slide it back in, that will, open the, that will automatically open, ready, ready for use. Ready for the use okay. of the lady. Of the lady. <laughs> what we've got on this little plastic shelf here is a, a drain down for your flush tank. It is very important in winter you do drain that down if you're not using it. Yeah, so if it's yeah. in storage for a couple of months and it's freezing, what I tend to do is at the end of the season, if I'm not going to go away in it again, I'll drain it fully down. Same with the rest of the water system, but I'll show you how to do that. The best thing to do is just flush so it. What, what we, we're draining that down anyway when we left the site, so we don't want it slopping about inside. Well, yeah, it depends. Try, you try to be a bit clever, but if you're only going for a, co a couple of days or whatever, you perhaps don't want to fill it all the way up, okay. unless you're using it constantly, and you, this type of facilities are too far away, yeah, you're not yeah. going to bother, it's raining. Um, just try and keep the level. So, like, if you're there for a week, you're going to fill it up first thing, and then just top it up if you need to. Right. But you can just flush it by flushing it using the flush system inside and the electric mm -hmm. button and flush it into that tank there and then, and okay, then, and then empty it yeah, for, yeah. for the winter definitely just drain that last little bit via that if you're trying to drain the whole lot out <laughs> through there you're going to be there for a while <laughs> okay, it's only yeah, a little yeah. tiny point yeah okay but for winter it is very important if you're not in it and use it it's in storage and this this stuff when i put stuff in here i, just, I can just yeah. pour it on it'll run yeah, it'll run it in there, it'll run it. in yeah the only time you know that is full is when you see it through that hole right. the only time you know it's empty is when you flush it and nothing coming out okay Okay. Right. Yeah. So, next thing we come to, I've got my torque spanner next to it. This is not something you do when you get to site, this is something you do before you leave yeah. home. Uh, it's to torque the wheel nuts. It is very important you check the wheel nuts regularly. I do them before I leave it each time. It's 130 Newton meters if you've got a torque spanner. It is on a little plate here. Obviously, all the important writing is always in the swallows if you ever go into a contract. It's always in the smallest of writings, yeah, yeah. which is on the bottom of your, your plate here. Also, tyre pressure also very important. So the, the little light in there, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does turn the steel setting there on also. Obviously, that's, you don't need it. Obviously, it's for yeah. Okay. Okay, that's everything on the outside of that. The door has got a very powerful magnet. So you just literally pull. Obviously, that's a, if it gets a bit windy. Right, if you'd like to go inside now, we'll uh, show you the fun bits in there. Eh? Okay, control panel in. We've got control panels and water system and everything else we can do. Right, I'm going to put my slippers on because I get shouted at if I get the carpet dirty. <laughs> right. So obviously you can hear the radio, I'm just going to... I'm just going to quiet that down. Right, so control panel. If you're aware or not, this this you can also talk to it via an app. I've already got the app. Yeah, good. So what we've got is, on this left hand side, is the on off button. That switches your 12 volt systems on, the master switch. I'm not going to do that now because I did it with the last one and it upset that. So I don't want to do that, so that's your heating system. So what I did then, if, if you notice, it was all blank. Mm -hmm. I'll just do that now. So that's actually just a screen of sleep. You can see things are all lit up. Yeah, yeah. So when you come in, pressing all that, you hear it go beep beep to tell you it's waking up. So then you'll see that. So the first thing we come to on there is your water pump. So that is off. But the outer out, outline. Goes, come on. The outline is actually switched on. Right. So when you co first come in, do not switch that on. Okay. Okay. So you you can switch your power on. You can switch the awning light on if you wanted to, or the radio on. But don't switch the. If you've done a drain down on on the water system, you switch your water pump on. Taps have been all left open. Your drain's been left open. You can end up with water going where you don't want it. Okay. So the first thing we do when we when we come in, switch your control panel on. You could switch the heating on if you really wanted to. But I tend to get the water system button running first. So. Go around, make all, make sure all the taps are closed. Mm -hmm. Same with your bathroom, 
make sure they're all closed because I've had it before now. I've, I've uh, thought I've shut everything off and then the shower's going and there's water going all over the place where you don't want it. Especially if you've stored something in the shower, then you're in trouble. Down here, if you just open the front base there, what you'll see down there, apart from the empty space, right, down that bit there, there's a yellow lever. You see that? See, there's a yellow lever. There's a white, white elbow on the pipe. Yeah, yeah. There's a yellow mm -hmm. lever. A bit further back, yeah. Yeah, so that is your drain down for your boiler and for your tap system. Okay, the position it's in at the moment, which is flat, is closed. So if that's closed like that, the water will stay in the system. Okay. If it's it's, a, it's like a hinged mechanism, a hinged lever, I should say. So if it's pointing upwards, that will drain the water down onto the ground underneath your caravan. So if you forget to close that, all the water that you've got in your rack roll is just gonna go straight down there and straight yeah, back out yeah. again. <laughs> so that's why I say, don't put the water pump on straight away, close all the taps, make sure that's closed, and then, and then we can get the water pump. system up and running. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll come back. We'll come back to that. So if, if I'm if I'm draining down for winter, I just lift that up. Yeah. Lift. Disconnect yeah. it. Obviously, disconnect the water with it for yeah. weeks. Lift. Put so it's pointing upwards. Then you open all the taps to centre, so that allows the water to drain down out of the water system. I tend to do that on my way home. So when I get to the entrance of the um, site I've been staying on, so not, obviously not on the pitch. You don't want water because yeah, the next yeah. person not going to be very happy. Got a soggy pitch. So you get to the, get to the site entrance, I open them up, open all the taps. As I drive home, that bit of movement of the caravan helps the water to drain out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Right, so what we want is water in now. So I've checked all them drain downs that are closed and the taps are closed. Press that, water pump is on. So to get the water system up and running, if we've drained it down previously, the system is just going to be full of air. Okay? So we want to get the air out of it, so mm -hmm. purge the air out of the system. I start on the cold side. It's up to you how you do it, but I always start on the cold side and by the door because the reason reason for that, as you've got sputter sputter, the reason for that is if that pipe is curled off, I'll know because it, it'll just be air coming through. I'll, I can run outside, straight the pipe, run back in again, and then I'll get water coming through like that. Mm -hmm. So it only takes a few seconds for it on the cold side. So once I've got a solid stream coming through the cold side, I turn it to the hot side then. So what we're doing on that is obviously filling the hot water tap system and the hot water boiler. So if the hot water boiler has been drained down, obviously it's full of air. It's a 10 litre container, 10 litres of air has got to come out of that tap before it fills up. Okay, so open it up on the hot side. I have primed this already. So it'll be spotting for a couple of minutes at least. If it seems to be taking a long time, here's the pump coming on now, I shut that down, because it might have an air locking. Mm -hmm. So it, the pump is building up pressure now, it's stopped. As soon as the pressure's built up, the pump will stop. Then release it slowly, because it can come up with quite a bit of force and it explode out the air and a bit of water. So it's pushing the pushing the air out then and pushing the water into the uh, system. Okay. So as you're using the hot water then, so once you've filled your hot water tank, so as, when you use hot water, as you're using hot water, it tops up with the cold. Okay. Until your obviously the is empty yeah. and it won't be topping it up, but you'll realise the, <coughs> the, the drop in pressure then. Mm. You'll see it, it will it, it'll start s slowing down. So you'll never have a boiler empty. But you obviously need to get the acro filled up to re to top it back up. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. So do that. Do the same with each tap. Otherwise, if there's a little bit of air in there, the pump will run on a bit longer than it should than it needs to. Okay. Yeah. Right. So once you've done that, you may want to uh, put the heating on, or you may want to heat the water. So we'll go across to the heating control panel now. So the one on the right, that little black control panel. So what we've got: big button and return button. The big button. That's to switch it on, so you just press and hold switches it on, press and hold to switch it off. It also controls things as well if you want to change anything. So at the moment I've actually got it up and running. I'm just going to press the, the return button just to light it up so we can see what we can see. So running across the top, that means I can see that things are in operation. So top left, that there, that little flame, that is not gas. Okay, that bottle there is gas. So that little flame there actually indicates heating in operation. And it's flashing because it hasn't reached temperature yet. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it is a bit confusing. You think that would be gas, but yeah, it isn't. Yeah. Bottle is gas. So that's what the energy yeah, I'm operating on. Yeah. Flame is heating. It's flashing because it hasn't achieved temperature yet. The next one is water heating. So again, that's flashing. So that hasn't achieved a temperature yet. Next one along is your energy. So we've got a gas and electric in operation at the moment. Next one is your fan. So the fan is thermostatically controlled. So that's blown air. So if it's uh, close to or nearly reached the uh, the temperature you've asked for, the fan will die down. 
if it uh, needs to heat up, the fan will increase. And if, once it reaches temperature, the fan will shut off. Okay. And what we've also got, this little plug in the right hand corner, that's to say we've got electric available. So I'll show you consumer, the consumer units in a minute, which has got a little orange button on. If you haven't switched that button on, that little plug's not there, or you haven't connected your electric, you won't be able to operate on electric, it'll come up with a warning triangle saying you haven't got any electric to play with. Okay, mm -hmm. then in the centre of the screen now, so what we've got is 18 degrees centigrade is the temperature I've asked for, yeah. and the clock, which is obviously incorrect at the moment. Okay, so if you want to change anything, click on the big button, it, it then lights up the second line now, and the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we come to, so we can, so that one there is, obviously it's a motor or mic on, but it's uh, obviously for caravan as well. Um, that's the heating. After so many seconds, it goes back to your main screen. So <coughs> click, yeah. click on it again. Yeah, yeah. So first one, I click on there. I can switch heating off, or I can set a temperature all the way up to 30 degrees if I want to. So you pick whatever temperature you want, say 18 degrees, click on the button to confirm it. And it comes back out of that one now. So if I go back to the main screen, you can see <coughs> it's, show, it's showing the, again, to, obviously it was 18 before. If I can actually change the temperature from this position now, if I wanted to, by just turning that. So it'll say 18 is not warm enough. Yeah. I want 23. Click on it, confirm it. And you'll see that flash between time and. It should be 23 in a second. There we go. Or two what? Click to confirm it. Right, so the next one we got. So we move the, the button, turn it, so the next one starts flashing. That's for water treating now. So click on that one. So we've got options again of off, eco, hot, or boost. So what I'm going to do is confirm it on the eco for a second. So the top line showing eco. The option, the, the differences are eco is about 40 degrees, hot is about 60 degrees, or boost. Boost function, if you want the hot water, or you want the boiler to concentrate on the hot water for a period of time, say half an hour, um, what you've got is a com combination of a boiler and a heater in one unit. So mm -hmm. if you want the hot water, mm -hmm. you can uh, prioritise that. You can also do that with the heating as well if you wanted to. I'll show you that in a second. Right, next one is the energy. So that one there is flashing, I can now click on that one. So we've got options of gas on its own. So if you've got no electric, gas is the only option. Or mix one, mix two. So electric one and electric two with the gas. So you see the top line is now changing with it. Or we've got electric on its own, one or two. So I'm just going to confirm <coughs> electric two for a second. I'll just explain all of them. So electric one, <coughs> all right, electric one, electric two. So that's roughly one kilowatt, two kilowatt. Okay, it is slightly less. It's about 900 watts, 1800 watts, which is easy to remember at one and two. Um, we've got the gas, so it, mix one, mix two, that's the same. So it's electric one, electric two with that. The differences are, <coughs> so electric one, electric two, there's not a huge amount of energy there. It's probably fine for summertime because most of the time it's just going to be heating your hot water rather than the room. If you compare that energy to at home, a kettle is about two kilowatts. It's heating about a litre of water. This two kilowatts is heating 10 litres of water and this room. Yeah, yeah. Your kettle at home is not trying to heat the kitchen at the oh, same okay, time. Yeah. So <coughs> in the winter, it may not, it may struggle to get, especially you'd struggle to get 30 degrees if it's something like minus outside. So you can use the mix. So the mix, what that will do is use both, both energies from cold. So electric and gas, it gets the temperature, it'll shut the gas off. It will tick over on electric then, then until someone leaves the door wide open or use all the hot water. The gas will then come alongside electric again and bring it back up to temperature. Right. So you're not using the gas all the time, but it's giving the energy to be able to get there. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you obviously have a play with it. If, if you are away in the cold time and you feel that two kilowatts is not, gonna, is not getting it, you, or if it's warm enough for you, you may not need to use the gas. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one along is your fan. So at the moment we're on eco, so when you turn the heating on as such, it will normally go to eco anyway. You've got high and there's boost function. If you see that now, it's not allowing me to go boost. Okay, the reason for that is that the fan is operated by a thermostat. The fan is only going to come on on the normal temperature range. If you're just trying to boost it by two degrees, it's not going to come on until it's dropped two degrees. So it actually has to be a jump of four degrees for the fan to come on in the first place. Right. On the boost, it's 10 degrees. So if you if you jump in your van when you first get there and it's really cold, and you want the, the van to warm up really quickly, stick it on the, um, the mix, gas and electric, put it on to boost on the fan, and that will heat up really quickly. And it's a really good heater, it will blast some heat into this size van. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while it's doing that, 
it, what it's going to do is obviously take the heat away from the water tank. So it's not going to really give you any heat, heat for the hot water until it's reached the temperature. Then it allow the you know it'll uh, allow more heat for the boiler. Yeah. Okay. Then what we've also got we've also got a timer 